Ashley, however, I... I gotta say, I, I feel like once again we're living in this world where the Fed tells us one thing, but you know yeah. does something different. They're downgrading their economic outlook, so they're saying, yeah, things are not as good as we thought. 1.8% mm -hmm. is their projection for annual growth for 2016, and yet they're saying the case has strengthened for them I, to have a, a rate hike. I mean, I hate to use the word clueless, but I'm going to use it. Clueless. I mean, look, we're talking <laughs> four rate hikes this year, four next year, four in 2018. Then they cut it to two this year. Now it's one the, uh, this year. Uh, they are just scrambling. And to, to Peter's point, retail sales are down. Production manufacturing down. Housing starts down 5.8% in August. The jobs numbers, not that great, the latest job numbers. I think it's a weak environment. But on the other, there's another part of me that wants mm -hmm. to, I've got to be honest, rip the Band-Aid off, gone with a rate hike right now, shock the market and say, all right, let's get out of this artificial world and get down to business. It didn't happen, and I just think they clued. They, well, need, I, I they think need fiscal policy scared, support as much right? as they do monetary That's policy. That's a good point. So let me, let me go over to Kathleen on that one, because you're advising uh, Donald Trump on the economic front. Uh, when Ashley says, you know, you've got to have both monetary and fiscal policy working mm. together, what does he mean? Well... <clears throat> I think he means that they can they can be um, at odds with one another. But I'd like to add, and 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 as the previous um, guest just said, that you know this this may be of utmost important for banks um, and a real catalyst for the markets, um, the stock markets, um, mm -hmm. using fiscal and monetary measures as a means of stimulating economic growth through mm -hmm. this long slow recovery mm -hmm. period has been very underwhelming. And I right. think it's very interesting that, that um, Donald Trump's economic policy is not real heavy on monetary or fiscal policy. It's very heavy on let's let competitive markets work. Turn the free actors, the investors, the small business people loose, cut their, ca cut their taxes, and get a regulatory Yeah, well, the, you know, that's that fiscal policy, that's though, fiscal right? Policy. You know, you gotta, you got to have Washington doing its part, and uh, mm -hmm. that would be, uh, according to Donald Trump, via lower taxes, thereby unleashing some of that entrepreneurism that you're talking about, Kathleen. You're right. Um, let me go over to you for a minute, Mr. Kelly, and uh, you tell me your thoughts on whether or not we're really going to see a rate hike anytime this year. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a rate hike this year, and I think one of the most important data points that came out recently was the non-manufacturing PMI. That's a leading economic indicator. It's the, the lowest in six years back to 2009 levels contraction. That's the majority of our economy. One of the reasons why the market is rising right now is because the defensive names are trading at historical multiples because their earnings are worth more in a low interest rate environment. The 10-year Treasury tells you everything you need to know. It was at 2.3% last time the Fed raised rates. It's around 1.5% right now. It's telling you that they cannot raise rates because that's a tightening mode and that'll hurt the economy every more. And guess what? The data is getting worse and worse and worse. Even the jobs number, they have two data points and mandates. It's jobs and it's inflation. Inflation's nowhere close. It's starting to creep up. Mm -hmm. If they tighten, it won't get to their 2% number. And guess what? Should we get into another environment where we start to get towards recession zone? They don't have any more bullets. More what are they going to do? Well, so the problem is, exactly. is the Fed has lost all of their meaning. Uh, lost all their meaning, all their credibility, all their ammunition. I mean, Steve, what could they do? Is there anything left out there? I mean, you look at Japan, which has had to really improvise and get innovative in terms of its po right. monetary policy. What else can we do, if anything? Well, we, what we can do, Trish, is not on the monetary side, in my opinion, and I think Japan is very instructive in that regard. So is Europe, by the way. ECB is doing everything it possibly can to inflate, and yet we see almost structural disinflation occurring there, and we've seen it for decades in Japan. Uh, Kevin's exactly right. We have a decelerating economy right now. We've, we've had that for a long time in manufacturing. Now we're starting to see that in the service sector. So it is the wrong time, actually, to normalize policy as much as I want to see that happen mm. as a free market guy. Oh, no. Having said all that... The Fed is going to do it in December, and I'll tell you why, because they so fear that they've lost credibility. They don't have the guts to do it right now, weeks in front of a U.S. election. Okay, the so, Fed so let's, is, 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 let's talk about that, though. So walk me through that. If they, in fact, do this come December, and they raise rates by a quarter point, do you think the market handles that okay? Or do you think we're no, going to actually I, start to see people take money off the table? 
I think off the table. I think we'll see a replay of what we saw last December. And by the way, are, are, are they going to start doing this every December? Is this going to be the Christmas mm. present that the Fed delivers to us <laughs> is once a year uh, they raise rates? I, I hope we can do it more than that. But if you look at last December, January then was a mini meltdown in global markets. So, yeah. no, I anticipate that if I'm right about them doing it in December, we're going to have a very tumultuous start to the new year. Steve, you bring up a great point that they raised in December and then we saw a volatile January. That was because of their guidance. So they've already guided and taken the market to one raise this year. So if it does happen in December, I don't think the market's going to really be surprised by it. And I think people have positioned their portfolios that way. We saw in July that utilities came down over 7% because they're anticipating a hike mm -hmm. in interest rates. So if the Fed guides that they're going to continually and do a gradual pace, the market will blow up just like it did in January. But if they come out and they raise one time and then they say we'll be gradual, but we don't know when we're going to do it, I think the market will be tempered. Okay, yeah. but That's a good point. Forward guidance will really matter. I do agree with you on but that. But why yes. should we even listen to their forward yeah. guidance? They don't have a clue, it appears. And how do we know what the right. markets are going to be doing based on the results of the election? It could All bets could be off. Uh, Especially very because point. Janet Yellen may lose her job. Donald Trump has said time and time again that he may fire her. So if she doesn't get a rate, interest rate hike in in December, she's out of a job this come January 20th.